we had a nice little day at the zoo. Now we're just chilling out, making the most of this little sun that we get on this island. But it's a nice sunny day, just chilling. Emily's sleeping in the corner there. Welcome to Dublin. We are going to train in a little bit earlier because we wanted to see if a smaller session, if a warm up session, if you will, would work a little bit better after coming back into the gym from a day off because normally on a Monday I'm a little bit stiff so I feel like a warm-up session will help for the session that I'm gonna do later and just kind of prepare my body for that more difficult session right well I've lost my key card somehow and we can't get into the gym So I do constantly get messages on Instagram from younger gymnasts asking me how to improve their circle shape and I did kind of reinvent my circle shape over the years. It used to be very dished and very piked and we just didn't want that especially with this code taking deductions on each circle so we really wanted to stretch them out and make them as beautiful and perfect as possible and we started with this. So after I got the surgery on my shoulder, we had to build from the ground up and we thought, why not build from the ground up in a really perfect way, in a really beneficial way, and that was by starting on this pommel horse. You know, it started with just individual circles, but just making sure that they were perfect so that when we did build them up onto 10 circles, 50 circles, and then moving up onto the bigger horse, and in the proper skills, we maintained that circle shape and it still is part of my training and main focus to focus on that circle shape to be perfect and uh, make it as perfect as possible. So I do suggest that you guys do the same. Maybe if you want to improve your circle shape or improve your skills a lot, take a small step back and you know focus on the, the low down palm horse, even go on to the mushrooms and um, just really start from the basics because that's where you're going to really improve that circle shape. And of course it's super frustrating having to take steps back in gymnastics because obviously you just want to work the most difficult skills and build up your difficulty and your routines as much as possible. For me who was somebody who was doing you know, one of the most difficult palm routines on the planet and I was having to step back and do things that eight-year-olds were doing on a daily basis it was frustrating but it was something that needed to be done to improve my overall technique and you know get the, the big results like world medals and Olympic medals. All right, so I just had lunch there and I'm just gonna have a quick little 15 minute nap before my next session. Now the good thing about having a nap in a gymnastics hall is the mats of course. All right not overly happy with how that session went today. You know, not all sessions can go your way. What I'm gonna do this whole evening now is probably just look at my pommel videos from today's training session, from old competitions, from old training sessions also, and see where I can improve. What I do is an obsession. I, I'm obsessed with improving my gymnastics, and I think that's genuinely what it takes to be the greatest pommel horse worker of all time, or the greatest athlete of all time, is to become obsessed with your sport. I don't think any great in their profession or in their sports, you know, like the Muhammad Ali's, I don't think they weren't obsessed with what they did because I think 
genuinely it, it's a it's a necessity to be obsessed with what you do if you want to be one of the greatest to have ever done it which is which is my goal you need to be thinking about this even when you leave the gym just like i'm doing now i'm reflecting on this video i i use this camera as a video journal so there's some videos that i'm not even going to post on youtube i'm disappointed with this session that i did today but i know that i can do so much more and i almost welcome the feeling of disappointment even after competitions don't go my way i welcome the feeling of disappointment because it shows me how much i want it uh, it shows me how much i want to win in this sport and how much i want to be deemed the greatest of all time to swung around upon the horse so when i do feel that disappointment i embrace it but I don't use it to, to hold me back in any way, I use it to push me from behind and I think that's a very powerful thing that a lot of people should be able to do because if you you know if you don't feel disappointment at all then why are you doing it? You, you know if you're not disappointed with uh, failing to achieve your goals then I guess they aren't very important goals to you so for me when I fail to achieve any of my goals I feel that disappointment but use it to push me and use it to motivate me in every way I can so that's exactly what I'm going to do with this session I'm going to go home and just spend the whole evening analyzing and taking that into tomorrow's session just about to sit down and have my dinner now and thought I'd wrap up the video I hope you enjoyed it I hope you were able to take at least one little thing from this video maybe you learned something maybe you took some inspiration from it but I hope you were able to enjoy it most of all. So I will catch you guys in the next one.